Hi, my name is Kurt Gessler, and today we're going to be using Google Fusion Tables to create simple polygon-based data maps, like the one you see on your screen right now. This one here is a visualization of a recent Listeria outbreak that was born from caramel apples, of all things. Google Fusion Tables really provides one of the easiest mapping tools that allows you to give visual context to data with a spatial component. Where is population growing fastest? Where did the flood hit the hardest? It's a pretty good tool for those in the media and for anyone doing rudimentary data analysis. Now, Google Fusion Tables works on KML data, that's Keyhole Markup Language, which is really just an XML notation for mapping. Um, but the important thing to realize is that with Google Fusion Tables and with a lot of mapping software, it's not like you're going to need to be tracing the state borders or drawing this stuff. Really, you're going to be using official mapping data that's already out there and merging with other data that's already out there. So your part of it isn't necessarily drawing or ray tracing something. Your part of it is the analysis and the visualization. Now, today I'll do two projects, one that's created with data um, compiled outside of Google Fusion Tables, and then one merging data that's within Google Fusion Tables. Um, for the first one, I'll recreate this very map right here. Now, we see here I have in a CSV file all of the Listeria outbreak here from this December 2014. Here are some of the basic cases. Realistically, this isn't a data set that begs for visualization, but it's simple enough for us to provide some good instruction. So you see the various state names, and then here are the various cases. Now outside of this as well, I already have a CSV file here, we'll open it quickly, um, that gives the KML geometry of all of the states here, which is here. Arizona, Arkansas, and stuff like this. So I'm going to blend this stuff out of here. So what I'll do is make a copy of this file and actually I believe I got this is just a um, kind of pruned up version of something that um, Google themselves provided there's open data portals everywhere you know um, I live in the Chicago area Cook County has an open data site Chicago has an open data site Google gives stuff there's a lot of map sharing sites so getting this data isn't very hard again it's really what you want to do with it once you have it I'll make a quick copy of this I'll crack it open here. Now, all we want to do is add a column for all of these cases. And I'll cleverly call it cases. So now most of these, there's going to be zero cases. So probably the easiest thing I could do would just be to kind of fill this in with zeros. And you see I have 50 states in this data set as well as the District of Columbia. So let me slide this over here, see this a little bit here. So I see Arizona has four, California one, Minnesota has four, Missouri here has five, New Mexico five. Now this was a case where I got this data from the CDC site and they didn't have this in any kind of usable form, so I just created a simple spreadsheet out of it. Um, New Mexico, North Carolina, how many there? One. Texas has four. So you would never want to be kind of plugging this in for any kind of vast data set, but for, again, this super small set that we're looking at here, this should be easy enough. In Wisconsin, too. So now we have a set that includes both the cases and the geometry, which is what's important here. So I'm going to close this out here. We'll save it, let it keep the CSV file. We don't need this anymore. We'll call this uh, Listeria. Oh, we should probably call it Listeria. And then I will go over and upload this to our Google Docs. Now, um, I'm going to upload this as a Google Fusion table. We'll browse the file. There we go. Listeria CSV. Oh, 
The longer data sets are going to take a little bit of time to process, but this one shouldn't be too bad. So you identified what we had, and everything looks pretty good. So we'll let this finish here. Now see what we have here now in Google Docs is the four columns. You see it's identifying this as KML data and the geometry. And we end up on this first tab, which just has the kind of raw tabular data. Let's toggle over to the geometry and let this plot out all the rows. And you see right now we have a very red map of the United States without any real distinguishing features. But we want distinguishing features. That's the point of this exercise. So I'm going to change feature styles. Right now it's on marker icons, which is for, we're going to plot individual points. But we want to plot polygons, specifically the fill color. Now you see we have many options we want to do. That. We can do fixed, which is what it is right now, all that pink color. We can do columns. We can do certain buckets. But what I want to do here really is gradients based on cases. See here we have green. And it will go from 1 to 5. We'll use that range there. The problem is I don't know if it's quite dark enough to really show some of the differences here. So I've selected gradients, tried to make um, the more cases the darker, and then we'll see what this does for our visualization. And right away you see we are, are getting kind of what we want. The areas that have certain information are actually popped out nicely, and the areas that don't, like here's California, I think they had one case in one case, do not. So this easily tells us that this was um, a listeria outbreak that more was in the southwest, a little bit in the midwest, but really didn't affect the east coast or anything else. Again, there's not a lot of truths to be learned that you couldn't just glean by the data, but for instructional purposes this is good. Now you see for the um, information window we have some redundancy that we probably don't want. So if you're looking to change the info window, First, let's turn off the uh, state abbreviation, and then you can toggle over to this custom tab here. Now, often what I like to do here is you're able to use basically inline CSS to do most of what you want. As long as you use single quotes, which is Google's preference. Uh, We can do that. We really don't need that. I think we need someone telling us what a state name is. I think the state name is plenty. And the cases are there. Let's see what this looks like if we save that. So you see what we've done is we've, I don't like that too much because it's not bold any, bolded anymore. We have the state name here is New Mexico. We have the number of cases. Getting closer. Let's go back in there again too. Let's unbold cases. And let's bold the state name instead. Now we're using really old HTML here, but works just fine in this case. New Mexico, case is 5. Missouri, case is 5. You see we have that 200p width set. Maybe it's a little long, but I think for some of the longer cases that's fine. Now. Right now this is set at private, so if we wanted to publish this, the first thing we'd have to do is change the visibility. And we would say public on the web. And then we would be done there. Publish. And then we can grab this. So if we had this embedded on a page, it's say 600 by 800. We would then just copy and grab this code and paste this anywhere we would need to. Now, with um, when you're grabbing the embed code, it takes the current view you've selected. So be sure you have the pretty much the right view that you're looking for on this in order to make this work. And then you see it really wasn't a very challenging thing to replicate. Pretty much what we did here, albeit in a green color palette instead of a brown one. Now for the next exercise, we're going to take some existing data that's already in my Google Docs and merge that. 
What I have here is in the Chicago area, this is some eight county population numbers. Cook County has grown. This is 2000-2010 uh, growth rate. Cook County has shrunk. DeKalb County, Kendall, Kane, and everything like this. But we have no geography right now. Close our table right there. And then over here I have just a copy of the greater Chicagoland area. Just some same kind of obnoxious red. That's all those counties there too. So we have the geography and then we have the data. What we simply have to do is merge those together. Let's move back to those population numbers here. What we will do is select merge. We'll merge this with our clean eight county geography data that I simply got from, I want to say, the Cook County open data site. So you see right away, it wants to sync these up. So it's going to say, um, I'm looking at in this data set, you have something called county name that seems to have data that's very similar to this data set, which was called name. So it made a pretty intuitive guess. You don't have to go through many changes here. Luckily, there's not a whole lot of stuff. Often, um, tricking Google into recognizing what counties you want synced up is the hardest part of this. So we'll say, so it did a good job here. We'll say yes. We would like all of those to be merged. And then let's view our table right here. So we've taken our two different data sets that are within Google Docs. You see it's applied the geometry fields to our various counties. And let's see how this maps out here as we go. Right away we see a whole lot of red. Let's do the same trick we did before. Let's go into Feature Styles, Fill Color, and then probably Gradient again. we we'll use that range there. See, instead of green, we wanted to maybe spice this up a little bit, show gradient. Let's use maybe a blue color palette. I'm just going to use some of the baseline colors here. Don't need to get terribly fancy. Okay, let's see what this looks like now. And right away, you see that. Immediately you see that the, the highest, highest growth county and it's coming out of the window here was Kendall outside of Chicago area, though most of the growth seems to be on that outer concentric ring. And then some of the inner areas of Chicago, Lake County, DuPage, and Cook County had the lowest growth rate. There was simply not much room for them to grow. But you see our information window is already a little bit messed up. So let's go through here. We don't really need state abbreviation. We already know what we're dealing with here. We don't need geometry. We just need pop name and county name. So let's toggle over to custom, see if we can get all that information within the uh, window here. Take a few guesses here, let's change it. We have the same problem where I think we need to specify what a county name is. Seems self-evident. And here we go. That looks a lot better here. So Kendall County, pop change, 104%. Now here... 18%, 18%. Not much visual difference between 18 and 34. I kind of hope that there would be. So what if we try to darken all of this up a little bit? Help anything? No, it really just affected that. like to find some way to get 
all of our counties. Oh. Looking a little different here. Well, we have separated that out, but we don't really have a good deep dark blue for some of that stuff. Because you see most of our data set simply within a very constricted range. So, not tremendously visually impressive. So let's zoom in a little bit here. So we can get ready to publish it. And then we would do the same trick as before. Now that we've merged these, we would do publish and change the visibility so that everyone in the world can see it. And then we would just simply get our embed code, whatever we would need here. Maybe it's going to be you know, a huge map of the Chicago land area. And copy and paste and put this wherever you want. Thank you for watching my tutorial on using Google Fusion tables to make polygon-based data maps. If you're looking for maps that involve individual data points, like this one involving the closing of Dominic's in the Chicago area, please consult my earlier tutorial. Thanks again.